what do you say to those who say, well, look, this lovey-dovey, engage modern world, <laughs> non-particularly fundamentalist religion doesn't do well. This is the core argument to me, that it just doesn't win. And in fact, Francis has seen a further decline in attendance that, 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 that we've also seen, I'm obviously in the 21st century, a pretty epic decline in religious belief in the United States. I mean, quite ahistorical. So let me ask you about that. Why is, why is Christianity in this kind of crisis? Oh boy, that's a big question. So one of the things I've done in the, these recent years is I've gone back and I've reread scripture through the lens of every syllable, especially of the New Testament was written by and to a community that had no power, no power. I mean, unrecognizably powerless compared to where we are. And, and what is this message to this community that is powerless and persecuted to an extent that we can barely, ma uh, barely imagine, right? They're, they're killed. <laughs> they're driven out of towns. They're whipped. They're beaten. They suffered beatings. We suffer tweetings. And, and what is the message to this struggling church? What is the message that Jesus delivered? It's not, we will rule. It is, we will serve. We will love. What are the fruit of the spirit? Kindness, peace, patience, gentleness. What do you do to those who curse you? You bless them. None of it. It is so countercultural. You know, in our and our sort of idea of how you preserve the health of the church now, the church is almost consumed with notions of, of earthly power and earthly respect. Just consumed with it. You disrespect me. You don't like me. Whereas Jesus comes and when he is crucified, you know, and everyone's looking for a Messiah. Everyone's looking for a Messiah who's going to do what works. And what works was going to be throw off the yoke of Roman oppression redeem, you know, restore Jewish rule in Israel. And he dies on a cross with like five people around him. Even when he is resurrected, he just appears to a few people and then just kind of leaves them without a plan, <laughs> just a direction, you know, go and make disciples. And yet here we are 2000 years later talking about Jesus Christ and Caesar Augustus is a footnote to history. And so one of the things that I think when you're talking about Christians right now is they've forgotten some really fundamental basic principles such as, and this is Paul writing to a church that is far more persecuted than Christians are today in this country, in the West generally. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power. And that's not, he's not referring to earthly power. He's talking about confidence in the power of God and love and sound mind. And if you think about the American Christian community right now, is it characterized by a spirit of fear or is it characterized by confidence in the power of God, love for others, and a sound mind? I would say it's more characterized by a spirit of fear. And, and so when I go and I speak at religious organizations and institutions, I speak all the time, Christian colleges, Christian, uh, churches. And one of the first questions people ask me, how do I prepare my child for, for, for college? And I've started to just say, first, fear not. <laughs> don't, don't approach the world with fear. We're the last community that's supposed to approach the world with fear. And I just feel like if I had to pin it on one thing, Andrew, it is the spirit of fear. A spirit of fear has consumed people and it is distorting the way in which they interact with the world.